back by popular demand. Let's uh, welcome in Winnipeg Jet first round pick, fresh off representing the United States at the World Junior Hockey Championships, Rutger McGrory, who joins us from the University of Michigan. Rutger, welcome back to WST. What's up? Not much. How about you? Thanks for having me. Well, you know what? Things are good. I mean, uh, listen, Jets have been playing well. We've been having a great time watching the big club. But um, I'll tell you what, that World Junior Hockey Championship sure was something. Um, uh, the tournament was back, kind of normal, out of time, great atmosphere. And uh, obviously for Jets fans, we got a, uh, there was particular interest in Team USA watching you. I mean, just from a, from a personal perspective, I mean, what was the experience like? How was it? Uh, I mean, it was, it was unreal. Every time you get to put on that, uh, USA Jersey where the red, white, and blue, it's, uh, I still get the chills, man. Like that place was, that place was hopping, uh, Moncton and Halifax was two great locations. Uh, and any, anytime you get to have the world juniors in Canada too, there's always going to be a little, a little extra, uh, flair on the tournament. They, uh, they had some really good fans. They were, they were very welcoming and, uh, the competition was unreal. I mean, that semifinal game versus Canada was one of the one of the games that I'll I'll be telling my kids about. That was that was something that was unbelievable. And going through it with Lush too, Chaz Lucius, another Winnipeg guy. That was that was awesome. Played on his line for a good amount of time, and uh, I I loved it, man. There's, I mean, you guys watched the tournament. That was that was something special. Well, it, it was. I mean, and uh, you know, with everything that's happened with Hockey Canada here and the tournament and the pandemic, I mean, just getting it back to what we remember it. Um, and you know, I, I'll echo what you said. I mean, the folks there that packed those barns in Halifax and Moncton really added that atmosphere that this tournament is all about. I imagine. I mean, as someone that's played within the U.S. program for a long time. This has always been a goal. I mean, I think of most junior players to do it, but I mean, especially guys that have come through that U.S. program. I mean, when you're 16, 17, 18, um, the goal is to put the uh, stars and stripes on and get on the biggest stage in junior hockey. Yeah, I think that's something the NTDP has done, done a really great job of. I mean, it's a development program for a reason. I mean, they teach us how to be winning hockey players there, and uh, that two years was some of the best years of my life. Uh, and then obviously the goal from there is making that world junior team. Uh, and I think we, we had a good amount of 03 NTDP guys and 04 NTDP guys. And uh, so that, that just gives us some com comfortability. Uh, and then the other guys as well that didn't play for NTDP, they came in and did an awesome job. I feel like our team bonded really well. There wasn't, there wasn't like clicks of NTDP guys or like different junior guys. I feel like everybody was very welcoming and it, it was a great, great bunch of guys. So. Uh, you know, you mentioned uh, Chaz Lucius. I got to ask you about that. I mean, sort of. I mean, it was a particular interest for Winnipeg Jet fans to be able to watch those USA guys and see you guys playing on, uh, you know, one of the top lines. Um, had you ever played with him before? I know his brother was on your team, I guess, last year on the NTTB. I mean, just tell us a little bit about the connection with Chaz and knowing that uh, in the future, who knows, we might see you guys do the same thing in the bigs here in the peg. Yeah. Uh, Chaz was awesome. I mean, uh, it took us a little bit, like uh, those exhibition games. I thought we got off to a decent start, but uh, it took us like two or three games to really start clicking together. And then I feel like we we finally got that chemistry, us two, and then Jackson Blake. And I feel like uh, we were a great line and we were hard to stop. I feel like in that that semifinal game especially, like we, we were forced. We got two goals called off, and obviously that sucks. I'm a little biased towards that, but – uh, I mean, we, I feel like we, we had a, we had a solid tournament and, uh, I'm looking forward to playing with Lucia again sometime in the near future. Well, that okay. Let's talk about that Canada USA game because listen, I, I think most of the people with us listening to this program are in the chat right now. We're pulling from the red and white, but it is a weird, it, it it's weird. You know, if you're a Jets fan, you're also hoping for the best for the guys that will hopefully be Jets in the future. Um, we certainly know you're going to be a pain in the ass in front of the net in the National Hockey League at some point. Uh, how did you see that when you went back to the bench? Did you think it was going to count? Um, I mean, for me personally, on my goal, uh, I obviously, I, as I said, I was a little biased towards it. I mean, I really wanted that one, but um, I mean, the refs looked at it. They they know the rules better than I do. So uh, if they felt like it was no goal, then I mean, it happens, but. From my point of view, I feel like the whistle didn't blow. I was going going to hit the puck in the net. I mean, why not? I saw the puck cross the goal line, and I was just fired up. Sully did the crowd, came back to the bench, and 
I mean, obviously we all end up knowing what happened. Uh, and so I, I don't know. It, it happens. Yeah. You know what? You've got your diplomacy at a professional level already. I will say that. Um, uh, hey, listen, it was a tough break and that was a hell of a game. I mean, you guys had a great, great start. Um, and got up two goals. I mean, I think you knew that a team like Canada was going to come back with the, you know, with the real push, and they did. Um, but man, those two disallowed goals. I mean, there was a lot of talk on social media about them, and it certainly wasn't completely clear, black and white. If you didn't have any skin in the game, which everyone pretty much does when you're talking about international hockey, which makes it so fun. I just, I have to ask you. I wouldn't normally ask about other players or players on another team, but. I mean, Connor Bedard was, uh, I mean, listen, this guy is something special. I, just from an opponent's standpoint, I mean, what does the coach say to you guys about there? I mean, do you have to play differently or play differently when that guy's on the ice? And, uh, I mean, hopefully we'll be playing against him in the NHL at some point. I mean, what were your what were your observations of uh, the guy that really put Canada on his back at sometimes? Yeah, I mean, uh, every, every team's got those, like, one, two superstars that are, I mean, Connor Bedard's obviously an exceptional player and uh, he, he had an unbelievable tournament. But I, I would say usually like every team has those one to two star players that you kind of have to look out for and be aware that when they're on the ice that they can make a difference. And I mean, yeah, like there was a couple of things in video we went over, like what he likes to do on the power play, that pull and drag shot. Uh, there was a couple of things that we, we pre-scouted on him. Uh, but I mean, honestly, like if you're if you're worried about him too much, like then like your game's gonna start to go downhill, and you're gonna you're always gonna have it in the back of the mind, like, oh, is is Bedard coming on the ice? Is he doing this? Is he doing that? So you kind of have to just keep playing your game and trust your instincts, trust your training, and uh, when he's on the ice, just I don't know. I, I I tried chirping him a little bit, tried getting him off the game, but. I don't, I don't think that worked too well. So, <laughs> Rucker McGrory with us here on Winnipeg Sports Talk. Um, I, I got to give you and your teammates so much credit. Um, often you see teams lose emotional games in the semifinals, and then you have to play this third place game. And, you know, we've seen different teams handle it in different ways. That game between uh, for the bronze medal was undoubtedly the game of the tournament. I mean, Fill us in on what was it like in the locker room, getting over the disappointment of the loss in the in the in the semi, going in your like the the way you guys approach that game and and I mean what do you remember about the roller coaster? We were on the air, people kept talking about the game, and we luckily got off in the third period and got to watch, and the goals didn't stop until Chaz had his hat trick and you guys were celebrating with bronze medals. Yeah, that was a uh, that was a crazy game. I mean, for for me personally, like. It was a big emphasis for Luke Hughes and I, like, coming into the locker room, like, making sure the guys had energy. Because, obviously, like, losing that game the night before, it's a quick turnaround. I think we played at 3, 3.30. So, I mean, it's less than 24 hours later. You're you're going back at it, competing for a bronze medal. And, obviously, we would have liked to have, have gold or silver. But, I mean, meddling for your country is, uh, is still a great accomplishment. And so we knew that uh, – we didn't want to leave there with any regrets and get in fourth place, not even meddling. Uh, so we knew that we had to bring the energy that day, come in, fired up, ready to go. And you're still playing Sweden. Like they got, they got a bunch of ball players and uh, a bunch of good players. And so we knew, we knew it was going to be a good game. And then there, there was a couple, a couple really nice plays. I mean, uh, we scored with, I think like a minute 45 left. I'm not quite sure. And then, all of a sudden, I sit down on the bench, grab a swig of water. I'm like, "All right, I th I think we kind of I think we got him here." And then next thing you know, 20, 20 seconds left, they come down and bury one, and we're heading to OT. And then, obviously, Luce comes in with the hattie to save the day. Uh, I mean, it was it was it was an awesome game, and I'm just happy that we we got that bronze and left came home with some hardware. Uh, you guys left it all on the ice, and uh, as I said, if people didn't pay attention to that game, it was their <laughs> loss because it absolutely was uh, phenomenal. Hey, uh, outside of obviously everything that happened on the ice, what was the best part of your World Junior experience? Like, uh, like not on the ice? Yeah, yeah. Like uh, outside, of actually playing the games. Yeah. Um. I mean, I'm I'm buddies with so many of those guys, so like. Where we all come to college and we make new new great friends, whatever it is. But then, like you pick it up, like back the first day of camp, like you're you got all these inside jokes. You start messing with guys. You start like it, it was awesome. I mean, uh, just honestly, like 
I remember at one point, like we had like, I think it was like 15 guys in my hotel room, just messing around, watching a movie, playing cards, whatever it was. I mean, it was just, it was, it was an unreal atmosphere. And I, I, I love those guys and those will be some of my best friends for life. And uh, I mean, there's so many great memories that came from that tournament. So, so uh, the world juniors uh, in the rear view mirror, and now it's on to continue your season with the Michigan Wolverines. I'm, First off, how's the first half been uh, of the season? Uh, what's the experience been like, and how have you been uh, enjoying uh, wearing maize and blue there at Yost Arena? I mean, it, it's been awesome so far. I mean, wearing that maize and blue, wearing the Block M, uh, it's an honor. Just all those that have created the uh, the culture here at the University of Michigan, and like all those that have come before me, and uh, it's it's an awesome organization and. Uh, for me personally, on the on like my game, I would say uh, I I got off to a decent start. I mean, I was putting up points, but it it wasn't how I wanted to be putting up points. I feel like I wasn't playing my my best game, or I wasn't playing my game. And then uh, there was definitely a couple learning curves. And then uh, I I would say probably eight games left. I think it was versus Notre Dame. I kind of I, I talked to my line mates. I talked to uh, my coach Brandon Nerado and. I just said like, hey man, like I, I'm done thinking. Like I, I just want to go out there and play my game. And then I think the final eight games of the season, I really, I really started to pick it out. I pick it up. I think me and Gavin Brindley kind of had our coming out party versus Harvard that Harvard weekend. And uh, I feel like ever since then, the, uh, we ended the first half really good. And I mean, what a better way to start the second half versus OSU having a having a great weekend versus those guys. So I, uh, we're really looking forward to the second half and. I think we got some confidence coming in, so that's always good. Yeah, big, big uh, two gamer this weekend against Ohio State. Is the is the hockey rivalry uh, like the football rivalry that we know all about? Yeah, I mean, obviously everybody knows about the football rivalry. That's a uh, that's a world world known uh, rivalry, and hockey's the exact same way. I mean, we don't like those guys, and they don't like us. So uh, we're we're looking forward to it, and it'll be an emotional game, and. Uh, we're we're hoping to uh, we're hoping to come in and just have a great weekend. So Rucker, I, I, you know, I, I think fans will be interested. In this I certainly am. Um, you know, you're now a student athlete. Um, you know, you got uh, you were kind enough to take some time. You were just in class a little while ago. What um, what's your days like right now? I mean, when are you practicing? How much are you in the classroom right now? And uh, how are you handling what I'm sure is a little different than what you've been doing the last few years? Yeah, so, uh, I mean, I, I got a good routine going. I mean, our academic advisor, Ashley Korn, is, she's she's just the best. She sets up all of us with the best schedules, all the best classes. So I think right now I'm, I'm taking classes from, like, Monday through Thursday. I'm taking classes, I think it's 9 to – or 10 to 1 on, a, on Monday, Wednesday, and then Tuesday, Thursday, it's from 8 to, like, 11.30. I believe so. Uh, I'm in, I'm in I'm in very good classes, and then uh, Monday, Wednesday we lift at 8:45 in the morning, and then class, and then after that we usually practice around 3 3:30, 3 uh, and then after that if it's recover whatever it is you got homework you head over to the AC to do some homework get some help from the from tutors or whatever it is. So uh, I got a good routine going right now, and I, I've loved it so. Now, uh, a big part of what you're doing is also to prepare you to uh, take that next step. And um, you know, hopefully at some point, um, be talking to us as a member of the Winnipeg Jets. We were talking off air. You actually were at the game. Uh, and so we were talking about that 8-7 game between you and the Swedes at the World Junior. It was almost the NHL version of that game. Uh, it was a lot of goals. It was uh, wild. But uh, fill us in on uh, the night out at uh, Detroit and um, what contact you had with the Jets organization, if at all, while uh, while you were there. Yeah, uh, I mean, I, I love how the Winnipeg Jets play. I've never really... Uh, dialed in too much on like watching them play and like watching their systems or whatever it is but i love how they play it's fast paced don't dump too many pucks uh, and when they do like it's not even a dump like it's like a really smart deposit into a corner where it sets his teammate up for success so uh, i love how they play i love their game and then uh i yeah that game was that game was nuts that, that was a crazy game i'm not sure if bones would say that that is the exact blueprint of what's gotten <laughs> them to where they are in the standings i'll say that but uh it certainly would have been fun to be in the stands for it yeah it was it was an intense i, I remember I, I was there with my girlfriend and uh she was wearing she was decked out in a winnipeg sweatshirt winnipeg hat i was wearing a winnipeg backwards hat 
And like whenever we would, whenever Winnipeg would score, like we would give a little fist pump or whatever it is, and people were looking at us like, "Who are these guys? Like, what are they doing here?" And then uh, I, I ran into uh, Jimmy Roy and uh, Mr. Shovel Day off, and uh, I, I only talked to him for a little bit, but I mean, I, I just love those guys. They're very respectful humans and great hockey minds, and uh, I love chatting with them. And uh, it's just, it's just good to talk to them. Haven't. I mean, with the season, with their season, we haven't, we haven't. I've talked to Jimmy Roy and Mike Keen a good amount, but I haven't seen Mr. Sheville Day off since the draft. So it was, it was great to see him and talk to him for a little bit and uh, congratulate him on a great start to the season. Talk to him a little bit about fantasy hockey, how I got Nikolai Ehlers on the on the fantasy squad. So. Uh, yeah, it was always good to talk to him. Nick's back and getting you and everyone else some points after being off. And uh, it has been a wild season. I mean, the Jets, I think, have expa- uh, certainly surpassed, I think, most people's expectations. Uh, and they've done it grinding out. I mean, missing a lot of key players that are back right now. And, um, and I'm sure from your perspective, I mean, it must be really interesting. And I mean, I can't even imagine what it's like being a first round pick of a team and then being able to rip down from school and see a team that, you know, you'll hope to be on potentially sooner as opposed to later. Uh, is there a player too that when you watch the Winnipeg Jets, you sort of uh, can't take your eyes off of or can see yourself in that player? I, I wouldn't say there's... Um, there's a player exactly that I say like, oh, like I, I really model my game after him. Like I, like I, like I think that it, like him and I could be like dead on exact same player. But I mean, they they got a they got a strong lineup, man. Like those top two lines, even like uh, I think it was who's on uh, Lowry's line. Um, oh, Morgan and, Barron. Yeah, they. Uh, I like that that uh, third fourth line as well. Like they create a lot of energy and they. They stack shifts like they they grind them down. And I think a couple of goals like they they were stacking shifts in the ozone. Got a got a change in the ozone. Then Detroit had a bunch of tired guys on the ice, so uh, they're they're one two lines come out on the ice, and then they can just dominate. So I think they had a good system going. And then I mean like Dubois, that guy is like he's so silky, so skilled. I mean Nikolai Euler is such a smart hockey brand. And then like Blake Wheeler, Mark Shifley. I mean the list goes on. <laughs> They, they got a good team, so uh, they, they were fun to watch, that's for sure. Hey, Rucker, you mentioned Jimmy Roy, who is a, a beauty of his own. I mean, we remember him being a star for the Moose those years, and now he's a big part of the development group and Mike Keene. I mean, if you can, as a first-round pick, obviously you're a huge priority and a top prospect of the club. What interactions do you have with those guys throughout the year, and uh, what sort of things do you talk about? Uh, yeah, so for, for them, like, they've, they've been awesome. I mean, Jimmy Roy and Mike Keen are two great hockey minds that uh, really see the game. Like, they're awesome. Uh, and I would say uh, they, they come – they've both came down to uh, watch me play a couple times. Uh, I think versus Harvard, Minnesota. They, they've came down a couple times. times and after uh, after my games, like, they have me fill out a uh, – uh, it's not a sheet, but, like, they have me, like, write down notes on, like, how I played, like, what I'm going to do to – uh, become better this week or what would I change? So, uh, it's, it's just for my development and, uh, be, be a good, uh, self self evaluator and know how I play and know when I'm playing my best or what, what I could change possibly. So, uh, those two have been awesome and uh, I've loved working with them. And like I said, they're, they're just two unbelievable hockey minds. So. Rutger, obviously your focus right now is on, uh, the Buckeyes on the weekend. Um, but big picture, there'll be some decisions going forward. I mean, um, you know, with how well this season is going for you and how much you're enjoying the uh, the college experience, have you put much thought into at what point um, you might think about turning pro and um, giving it a run to uh, make it to what obviously is your lifetime goal of playing in the NHL? Uh, for me personally, I mean, just when I'm ready, I'm ready. I feel like uh, I, still, uh, I still got a, a little bit to go. I mean, just working on... Uh, just the ins and outs of my game, like getting getting one percent better every single day. I mean, I haven't put too much thought of when that day will come. I mean, I'm still in my freshman year at college. Like I have to enjoy this and uh, keep getting better every single day, and not worry about the future as much, and just coming into the rink every single day and working. But uh, I mean, for sure, like coming in, like my goal, my goal personally was like two two years would be like my 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 goal at least. But if it takes a third year, like hey, like. Uh, don't rush the process, but 
I would I would say the main goal for me would be that two two three year mark. So. Well, I guess, uh, you know, you'll cross that bridge when you come to it. First things first, good luck getting back into it and uh, being part of that rivalry this weekend against OSU. Uh, Jet fans will be paying attention to you. And obviously, you had a ton of fans in the chat room. Even if you were wearing the Stars and Stripes at the World Junior Hockey Championship, people certainly were pulling for you and Chaz Lucius. And uh, congratulations on again on a great tournament. Thank you. Thank you so much. Thanks for having me. It means a lot. 